Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarin. Of course, I'm joined by Rich Stambolian, as I meet you every week. How you doing, Rich? I'm doing great. How you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Right. Slithering around. Mm. <laughs> so I'm joined by Rich, the golden stud Stambolian. Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarin. Of course, I'm joined, joined by, joined by, joined by, joined by, and I'm joined by, joined by, I'm joined, joined by half of the dastardly hot bodies, Rich Stambolian. Yeah. The coolest dude. Around. Hell yeah, baby. Rich Stambolian by Mike Crisley. Rich Stambolian. Hey, what's up, everybody? <laughs> of course, I'm joined by the one, the only, the turd diggler, by the supplier of cocaine to the 1986 Mets, the cream to my cannoli. The president of the Sammy Zane Club is the coyest of boys, the original author of Baby Got Back, the Captain Kirk of the USS Matt Men, Rich Stambolian. I like that. With me, as always, the one, the only, the apple pie in my life. Rich Stambolian. The original radioactive man, Rich Stambolian. White is up the white. Rich Stambolian. Oh, uh, buenos dias, bon dia, watashi wei, ni hao. What's going on, everybody? Let's I'm joined by the bologna in my sandwich, the longtime, long time best friend, Rich Stambolian. What is going on, my friend? How are you doing? I feel like I am trapped in a vortex and I can only talk to Andrew Zarian. Yeah. Um, and what do this, you think of the sociology of what I booked? The sociology of what you booked is yeah, pretty fantastic. You. <laughs> you should be a sociologist. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Later. Hey, everybody. Welcome ah. to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. Our 400th episode here. A fantastic video done by MG Geek, Suncast, and of course, uh, Jonathan put that together. As always, 400 times we've done this. And for the 400th time, I am joined... By one half of the dastardly hot bodies, Rich Stambolian. Oh, that's me, baby. I'm back. I'm back in the studio. I'm back alive. Look at that white muscle. <laughs> that like, is the whitest muscle. I'm I've like ever hotting seen. out like your screen. It's I'm so pasty. I've been in a cave. I'm I'm done with hibernation. Okay, good. By the way. You're over it. It's yeah, over. I'm here. Uh, oh, look at this. Yashvan Shekowit. Uh, congrats on the 400. Two of the coolest guys in the IWC for 40. I don't know what that is. Uh, those are Turkish liras. Oh, excellent! And Italian, it's actually Italian liras, but before Mussolini uh, got toppled. What's the conversion rate on those? Oh, like it's worth like ten times more than our currency. What's the conversion rate on you? Uh, it depends. <laughs> it depends on the country. Sometimes they're more valuable. Guys, we have a lot to talk about today. It's forty rupees. Wonderful. Oh, right on. Cool. Nice. Thanks. Thank you. Very much appreciate that. Uh, this is our four hundredth episode. Rich is back in studio, man. We've had an unbelievable week. Uh, in that video, uh, you know what it was? That is a video of people. Uh, uh, the, the video intro yeah. was a compilation of people that have an unhealthy relationship with food because mm -hmm. we are either so bloated or oh, so yeah. svelte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... When you go through the compilation of the last <laughs> 10 years of doing this. I, it does kind of look like we were both like inflated, deflated, inflated, and deflated. <laughs> and I remember those episodes too. Like there's definitely a couple of clips on there where I was like, oh, I was so hungover that day. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Or like we started drinking early that day or like we tried to get out of there to start drinking early that day. I can't believe how loaded we would get. Oh, yeah. During those watch alongs <sighs> and, and the Matt so After Darks. So good. Uh, guys, so much to talk about today. I'm glad Rich is back in studio. If you enjoy the show, 400 episodes. I think we have some people that have been here since day one. Yeah. Day one. And you know where they came from? They came from What the Tech. A lot of those guys came from the Tech Podcast. Uh, so, yeah. tons to talk about, tons to do. Rich. Yes, sir. I've had a very eventful week. <laughs> Seems like it. I think, I think we all have. Uh, where do you want to begin uh, with the story here? Uh, I guess we go with Cody, right? Yeah, let's jump into it. But first, Joel Wood, 499. It's amazing, 400 episodes, and Andrew looks exactly the same in all of them. Dude, I'm ageless. You are ageless. You're, you're the timeless one. I am the time. You know what it is? It's all the... Um, Botox. It's all the Botox, man. <laughs> Look at this. You want to see me move my eyebrows? Yeah. Like yeah. I, it's hard, right? Your Can't face it, is so man. hard. Whenever I, uh, I give Andrew a uh, pound hug hello, his his face has the consistency of a brick. It's just <laughs> hard. It's so it's like hugging a wall. Uh, you know what's funny? <laughs> Somebody asked me recently. I got Botox. I'm like, thank you. I didn't, but thank you. I'll Thanks, take man. it. I'll take that. Cody Rhodes and Brandy are done with AEW. Uh, I think I've spoken about this every single day, all day, every day. Uh, I guess what I'll do, um, I'll, I'll break down the timeline of events. Because Rich, I was texting him. Mm. I was texting Rich and I was texting our producers while this was going on. And I'm yeah. like, okay, something big is happening. This was around Friday. 
And I started getting like very cryptic messages from people asking if I know something, like what's going on. And a lot of it was heavy on the WWE side, which. Yeah. It was very interesting. Um, do you. When did you hear about this? Pretty much when you heard about it, there were rumblings, I think, the night before that something was going to happen, right? And then that morning, a couple of days ago, you called me up pretty early and were like, hey, by the way, this is the deal. And then we had like a nice little discussion, which I think we can talk a little bit about once you get to the meat of it. But uh, here's another five from Andrew Barker. Uh, thank you very much. And 20 from that being happy 400, gentlemen. Keep up the great work. Uh, yeah, here's some you. beer money for you. Um, you. We're going out. We're going to go have a drink today. Andrew has a question that we're going to save for later, though. Thank you for the super okay. chat. Yeah. That's so, a question. Um, I guess I guess let's start off with. Uh, let's start off with the story where, yeah. you know, like Friday, there were rumblings. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not going to elaborate heavy because I've spoken about this. I spoke about it on We're Live Pal with Garrett. And yeah. uh, by the way, Garrett is fantastic. I, I absolutely love doing that with him. Uh, yeah, good guy. He was really good at leading me and, and kind of organizing my thoughts because he kind mm -hmm. of was in the know of this so essentially what what happened here um there was a disagreement and the story's financial you know they said mm -hmm. they couldn't come to terms on the financial side but a lot more has come into play here over the last couple of days like uh creative power right um uh, you know resp day to day responsibilities i mean you've, you've heard a bunch of stuff there were there were rumblings a while ago and everything was denied up and down from everybody i spoke to at aw right and even, and I and I believe Sean put out a report on Fightful Select where he said that even on Saturday, which is exactly what was going on and what everybody said to me, something changed from Friday to Saturday and everybody was downplaying it. Then right. Monday, I get a phone call at 8.40 in the morning telling me that pretty much Cody's done. There's a press release coming out at 10 a.m. Eastern where they have, you know, they have a separation agreement or whatever, you know, whatever that term that they use was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's over. Cody's leaving. And I said, huh, that's interesting. Uh, and then I was told about 20 minutes later that Cody's camp had been in contact with WWE officials. Fascinating. And I 100% believe the source of this. Right, uh, right, right. Multiple people have also heard from different sources, but this, I 100% believe this. Uh, it's almost unbelievable, you know? Yeah, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. So uh, fans are very split in how they're taking this, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, for once, I'm personally playing the skeptic when it comes to this, and I'm going to tell you guys why, and this is my theory. Apart from the money and apart from, you know, all the backstage stuff that we really aren't privy to, it's kind of interesting to me how this guy was so not anti WWE, right? But really all about the fans and giving the perception of the fans that WWE doesn't always win. There's a couple of sides to this. One side is if Cody signs with WWE, it kind of would disenfranchise those fans that are on his side by basically saying like, well, Vince always wins, yeah. right? The second part of my, my theory, quote unquote, is that again, I'm playing the skeptic here. This dude has been cutting these like really interesting meta promos and he's really been leaning into his own fan perception about himself and his wife, right? Yeah. He's a very smart guy. He's a very carny guy and he's had not in a bad way, not, not a bad that way. in a negative way, not in a bad way. But do you think it is possible that Cody, by doing all of this stuff, again, this is a skeptical fan theory. By Cody doing all of this stuff that he's creating his own wrestling multiverse. The guy is a big nerd. You know, okay, so you said that to me last night in the right. chat room, right? Yeah. And I, I like I'm gonna have fun here, right? I'm, yeah. not, I'm yeah, really yeah. just gonna have fun. I think if that that is the case, that he has created this weird split in mm -hmm. the Cody multiverse where there Cody is a Cody the Cody verse yeah. where there's like a Cody in WWE and there's a Cody in AEW. Right. Not saying that they're gonna do it at the same time, but right. this is like an alternate universe. Um that is very meta. And like multi layer thinking. Uh, I, you know, Cody's a comic book guy. Exactly. Maybe internally that's how he's justified. I'm not saying that that's what mm -hmm. it is at all. We're not saying that. Right, at right, all. right, right, right. Uh, I also didn't say Bill Goldberg is wrestling Steve Austin. <laughs> I got the text at, at, oh, no. at WrestleMania. Okay. No, no. no. I, I got the uh, I got the text from you where you were like, 
dude, if it comes down to Goldberg and Brock, sign me up. I did say that. I did say that to you. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, if he, if he, this is a whole like interesting Cody verse thing. Plus, the other thing is like in numerous interviews, Cody has said that he gets yeah. texts from Vince McMahon. He, yeah, they, hey, listen, Cody yeah. is a business guy. Right. Um, but let, let's get into this nitty gritty a little bit here, right? Because there's a lot of layers mm -hmm. to the story. Uh, I don't believe that it's 100% a financial thing. I never think it's a financial thing when it right. comes to something like this. And I'll tell you why. Right. Listen, Rich, let's say we're, we're doing this together, right? Uh -huh. you're, you're a VP of, of Matt Men Enterprises. Sure. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, you we started this together, which we did. Okay, here's a great example. We started this together, yes. right, this show. On a very smaller scale. Yes. We're friends. Everybody's cool. Right. You know, everybody's connected. Everybody mm -hmm. works together. Would you, would it be purely a financial thing for you to be like, I'm leaving and I'm going to go work with my the, the podcast that I hated? No. No, you no. you do that when there's something else to this. Right, right. That's I, interesting, though. I, I got to tell you, I mean, one of the things that I heard and was sent to me by couple people was that certain wording bothered cody okay this Interesting. is interesting listen i i'm i'm gonna say i i've heard this from like three four people mm -hmm. uh so i'm gonna you know i i don't want to go into the exact detail of what it is but certain wording bothered him and uh certain lack of credit bothered him where you know tony tony is the guy right he runs the place he owns the place and there was some stuff where that forbes article that came out where, you know, Tony lists, like, I'm the creator, I'm the founder, I'm the this, I'm the that in uh -huh. the beginning. And by the way, rightfully so, he's not saying anything wrong. Right, right, like, right. At, at all. And nobody should look at him and be like, oh, you see, he's taking all the credit. He started, he, listen, he funded the thing, he started the thing, he does 5,000 different things, this guy. Um, that affected, that that changed something. That's what, uh, uh, you know, was said to me by multiple mm -hmm. people. That that was just another layer to this. Listen, it very well could be that Cody felt that, you know, his, his powers kind of lacking there maybe he thought he saw himself in a very different role maybe he saw himself as i don't know i i, I think this is a very bizarre story but it at the really end is. of the day it's professional wrestling which is bizarre which is always bizarre yeah and in cody's defense he's going to do what he feels is best for his family yeah wrestling is a very short career for many people it could change overnight yeah uh literally you could you could twist your ankle in the in it, by three centimeters and shatter your whole career right so if, if you have an opportunity to be presented in this big picture way and mm -hmm. i'm not saying that that's what wwe's planning i don't know the exact plan i just know People internally at WWE have told me mm -hmm. that the anticipation is that he's going there. You know, it's fascinating. It's bizarre. It's dramatic. I think Very. this is everything that we love an odd way about pro wrestling. I also think this is like kayfabe 2.0. When you think about, think about these bullet points, right? One, he made that dollar bet with, with Dave Meltzer about selling out the arena years ago. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Two, um, he had his pro wrestling list. Three, he followed it through Four, um, he is on every, he's the face. He's one of the faces on everything they do for rampage. The intro yeah. dynamite, not the anymore. Intros. <laughs> right. The go big show, the roads to the top, all the documentaries on YouTube. Like he's in everything. Right. I find it fascinating that the backstage folks are saying like he wanted more. Right. He, uh, yeah. But listen, like what, what, what do we have on right now? The go big show. You yeah, know, it's it's very fascinating. I think there's more to this than like w things are going to come out within the next couple of months. And also well, probably next a couple days. And I do think the Cody verse thing would be interesting because, hey, was Mickey James the litmus test for the that forbidden door stuff? The forbidden door well, stuff. You know, that promo that he cut a couple of weeks ago. And, mm -hmm. and we spoke about this off the air because I think I messed it. I'm like, this is like a farewell promo. Right, like if that promo where he brought up CM Punk and the Forbidden Door yeah. stuff, yeah, that to me felt like. And he came out, and he's like, "I was told I should, I shouldn't, I should save this, but I don't right. know when I'll get a chance to do it." So here it is. It was almost like, "Hey, listen, I don't think I'm sticking around, but I want everyone to know, like, you know, it was, it was a weird program to start with, uh -huh. with uh, CM Punk, but without starting a program with CM Punk, it was more like a shot at him, seeing like yeah. everybody's giving him the credit, but." He left for seven years. I didn't leave. I went to Ring of Honor. I went to New Japan. Yeah, I went yeah. all over the world. I am the forbidden door. I'm the actual guy that went and did all these things. But again, when you say that, it's very meta. 
And metal. also, when you think about it, like you brought up a very good point it, that was like could be taken as a goodbye promo. But his last four promos also could be taken as goodbye yeah, promos. Yeah. You know, yeah. if this guy is if he's a smart guy, and if you're writing a book, this is how you write that book, right? This is how you take your character from A to B. You know, it's like Bilbo's there and back again. Yeah. You know? Well, here's the other part, right? Of all this. Yeah. Let's say he goes to WWE. Mm -hmm. Let, you know, by the way, Brandy's not part of that. Brandy's not going to WWE, according to the reports. Uh, okay. Listen, she, they just had a baby, you know? Yeah. Um, if he does go, he's going to be... Uh, I mean, I would be... I, I, I'm willing to put money on it that mm -hmm. he's not going to be positioned in this, like, lower mid-card position. Right. He's not going to be doing, you know, uh, weird mid middle of raw matches. I think they... Mm -hmm. When you have an acquisition like this, yeah, and, and it, you know, in Vince's thinking, he got a vice president of his number one competitor to right. leave not only on air talent, but leave the company totally that mm -hmm. he started from the beginning. Uh, he was one of the core people to leave and to go back to Vince. You use this in every possible way to make you to show the optics. Hey, listen, right. if, if morale was that bad here, why would this guy come back? How good is it over at AEW if, if this guy is leaving? It's fascinating. It is fascinating. I mean, listen, this is PR optics. Right. This is, and, right, right, right. And, and I think, unfortunately for AEW, WWE mm -hmm. does a much better job at the PR aspect because they're, they're far deep rooted with these other networks. Right, right, right. You know, when WWE picks up the phone and calls, you know, the New York Post and they run that story, they run it, you know, exactly how it's being presented right exactly uh, aw doesn't have that because they're not an institution yet which mm -hmm. wwe is you know it's oh, man there's so many layers to this and i love it it's very meaty and i think it's it's both driving people crazy and making people kind of want more right yeah um i think well you know if whatever the guy whatever makes the guy happy i'm sure he'll land on his feet whatever he does again there's more to this story and uh we're gonna we're gonna find out about it and a lot of people internally have come out and tweeted like it's not a work it's not a work etc and i feel like a lot you... of people think it is uh, right. i'm called an idiot somebody accused me of being in on the work <laughs> uh, and so this guy's like this guy's like you guys aren't fooling anybody i know you Ugh. and sap and melts are all, all in on it with oh. AEW. i'm like guys That's... first of all what an elaborate work what a piece of business that would be yeah it's like uh, you, you and uh, it's like Pat Patterson by the pool at Vince's house. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's what we do. It's like you and Sean and uh, and Dave just getting together talking about the the wrestling internet. Is are you part of like wrestling internet? Illuminati. K -K Illuminati. I'm part of the yeah. Illuminati. Are you part yeah. of the Illuminati? You're part of the kayfabe. Yeah, Dave sits with an owl, an owl <laughs> uh -huh. on his on his shoulders, two mm -hmm. owls, and it's just biceps the logos. <laughs> and we just wear cloaks and we just like you know just just bow down that's that how doesn't it works. sound like fun at all oh it's not it's uh, not we not got, at all we got five bucks from derek uh thanks derek you guys are almost as cool as matt riddle's abs congrats bro <laughs> uh joel we're gonna address your question uh 1999 thank you very much we're gonna take care of that later bob bro ten dollars 400 episodes in armenia you're now married by common law. <laughs> that is true. 100% that's true <laughs> and we got a five dollar donation from gbs nothing attached pretty cool Nice. And Thanks, then you got guys. James. James got a uh, $10 donation there. Oh, there we go. Uh, that's a question, James. Oh, we're going to save it. We're going to save those questions for later. But thank you for the love, everybody. We yeah. appreciate it. Uh, Yo, know, there's, there's, there is a lot to this, right? There, there's more than, there's way more to this than is out there. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to start trickling little by little. But, you know, here's a question for you. What is yeah. this dude? Does this, is this an, a, a hit to AEW? Uh, yeah, but in a, in a weird way, no. Yes and no. Like, uh, here's here's another two things that I think you're gonna find you're gonna be able to comment on. Right, one. One of his best friends is Daniel Bryan, Brian Danielson. Yeah, right. It was him, Brody, and Claudio. They were like a group, right? Claudio Castiglione, Cesaro. That's an interesting thing. This guy, one of your buds, just comes to the company and you're gonna leave. Weird move. Yeah. Right. His other best friend just won the NWA title. Yeah, Matt Matt, yeah, yeah, Matt Cardona. I, as a fan, I'm kind of like, yeah, there's something percolating. Do you here. know what I want to see? Well, I want him to show up in GCW at sure. that show, yeah, and help Cardona beat X Pac and Joey Janela. <laughs> Amazing. You know, can you, can you, <laughs> like, I, I'm being serious here, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, 
You know what? He he didn't want to turn heel, but my God, what a, what a heat moment that is. Uh, I think he's a very creative guy, Cody. Mm -hmm. uh, he knows what he's doing. You know, his father, his brother, two, I mean, legendary acts in, in the history of professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. He's not far from it. Uh, I... I'm just going to say I think everybody should should wait a little and see what happens because I I, I personally think yes. that if they are going to offer Cody a lot of money, which I believe they will, mm -hmm. they are, they are going to treat him as a top act. Now, as I yeah. say that, uh -huh. I, I'm not saying that he's not going to be squashed in a three-minute match, you know, against Brock Lesnar at some point because, right. you know, WWE does crazy stuff. They do. I'm saying if you, if you have access to this guy, and this is a once in a, not a once in a lifetime opportunity, but it doesn't, these opportunities don't come along. Right. You want to capitalize as much as you can. And this guy looks like a star. He's Homelander. Yeah. <laughs> that, Big, that giant, blonde with a ridiculous neck tattoo. His neck tattoo, though, two years left on the contract. All right? <laughs> that, you know, it would be funny if he walked into Tony Khan's office, peeled off the tattoo, and slammed it on his desk like, like he was a badge. <laughs> and he was just like, I'm out of here. <laughs> tattoo just walks away. Give me, give me a tattoo. Give me your trunks. Give me your shoes. <laughs> You're on suspension. <laughs> Bang. Slaps so, on the desk. Obviously, the Cody stuff, we are in deep with this. Uh, the statement was released on Tuesday morning, like we said. He yeah. had been working out the contract for six weeks. Talks fell apart over the weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, WWE wants him. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, everybody I spoke to there is like, yeah, of course we want Cody. So here's, that's a big thing. Here's, here's a fantasy situation for you, right? Yeah. Cody versus Roman Reigns. Yeah. Right? Cody's about to win. I'm sorry. Roman's about to win. Right? Yeah. Roman goes for a third Superman punch. Out of nowhere, Kenny Omega V-Trigger disappears. Oh, you would die. You would, Cody you would die if Roman. that happened, right? Oh, I'd explode. Yeah. 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 I would do a backflip yeah, right out would, my apartment window. I know. It, it's, like, it's like the the best fan fiction it's that never <laughs> happened. <laughs> it really know? is. Well, we're getting Jay White fan fiction. I do like the Cody verse <laughs> stuff, though. Yeah. I, if if somebody if somebody sends that to Cody, I think he should think about doing like a Cody verse where there's like different versions of Cody. Exactly. You know, th there's the there's the superhero version. Mm -hmm. You know, like we have the Homelander version. We have dashing, dashing. We have the American Nightmare, Star uh, Stardust, Stardust. Yeah. He he has created his own multiverse. Handsome, handsome, handsome. Cody. That was a good one when yeah. he had the bag over his head. Yes. Fantastic gimmick. Uh, and I was out of wrestling at that point. I hated pro wrestling. I he could was, not watch it, but that was like a, a bright light. He was the best part of SmackDown at a certain point. Um, okay, WWE. Okay, so here's... <laughs> I thought yeah. the big story on Tuesday was going to be the Steve Austin stuff. Yeah, yeah, Right? Yeah. So, uh, Kevin Owens cuts a promo on Raw. Mm -hmm. Pretty much like setting up a Steve Austin feud. Really taking a dump on Texas. <laughs> I took a dump on Texas, like sets this up. And I, I could tell you that, you know, spoke to people at WWE. They are very hopeful that this is going to happen. Uh, I don't know what condition Steve's in. I know. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that right before the pandemic, Steve showed up and he ran the ropes over and over again. Remember that? And he got like loaded in the ring and all the beer and stuff. Yeah. And everyone's like, wow, he's moving good. You mm -hmm. know, this is 2019. I think this happened. Yeah. So, Kevin Owens, Steve Austin, right? That's the story. It got buried by Cody. I never thought mm -hmm. Cody, a Cody Rhodes story would get buried by, uh, uh, would bury a Steve Austin returning after 19 years. This is super he has interesting not week. wrestled. I think he did that, that the redneck triathlon, right? Didn't he do that? Yeah, something like that. And he wrestled Bischoff at one point. That was like, his like last match. But like an actual last match was, was 19 years ago. Yeah. In 2003. Um, how real is this? I think this is pretty real. Uh, I think they mm -hmm. still have some work to do. I, I you know, depending on how uh, how he feels, what they're yeah. going to do. Now, I don't think... Steve always said that he didn't want to come back if he couldn't work. And if it didn't mean something. And if it didn't mean something. I mean, listen, uh, Kevin Owens, he uses his stunner. You know, you, you have that internal thing built in. Right. There's something there. I, so, oh, so here's yeah. a video. 2019 okay. on USA. It was straight up Steve. And Austin is in the ring. And he's bumping like a lunatic. I'm watching this video. Uh, Wrestling News CO put it out there on the 15th. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Austin's just... It's muscle memory for a lot of these guys. But listen, he hasn't wrestled in 19 years. Every interview I've heard him say is that he feels better than he ever felt. 
because mm-hmm. uh, he hasn't been bumping on his neck for 20 years, you know, mm-hmm. been twenty almost 20 years that he hasn't done this. Uh, here's the plot to this that I don't think people are picking up on. And when I spoke to someone over there, they alluded that, listen, if we can, this we don't want this to be a one-off. If we can have it not be a one-off. Yeah. Right? In the same breath, it was said that they had offered a lot of money to Steve to return in Saudi Arabia, and he never did it. Mm-hmm. It was like two to three million dollar offer. It's too hot. Uh, ah, <laughs> what? <laughs> would he be able to do the beer stuff? He wouldn't. He no, wouldn't be able no. to do it. It was yeah. just waters. Just waters. It yeah. would take. Uh, it would take the fun out. He just slap in the uh, liquid web. Uh, liquid. Uh, liquid liquid metal. Yeah. Liquid death. Liquid metal, liquid... I, I named every domain company I've ever used. <laughs> liquid web. Uh, so he... Listen, if they could do more than one match, and this mm-hmm. is what got me in trouble where people misunderstood what I was saying and the report came out that I reported that Steve Austin and Goldberg are wrestling at WrestleMania. I never said that. That's not happening. Right, right. Uh, but, you know, if there was ever an opportunity to get that match out of the way for your footage... Yes. For another 20-some-odd years... Yeah. That they were able to do it, I think this is something that they would want to do. Considering I agree. everybody's friends now, mm-hmm. right? Isn't that the match? Isn't that the one match that we never got to see? Yeah. Uh, I, listen, I, and I said this on Observe on uh, We're Live, pal. Uh-huh. I don't care about the match rate of that qual- of that match. I don't care mm. if it's a dud. I just want to see it happen. You want to see it happen? If they weird listen. brawl, <clears throat> you know, a stunner, a spear. Maybe an outside into. I don't care. I just want that moment to mm-hmm. even just a little bit. Just you want it to little, happen. I want it to happen. That, that's my own personal thing. I don't. I, I'm not. I, I don't want to see a five star Steve Austin Bill Goldberg match. Right. I, I don't want it to exist in the universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want this to be just for my shits and giggles. Oh wow, look, they did it. They finally because him and Hogan will will would never happen. Yeah. Oh. There's nobody else. <laughs> There's nobody else. That would be oh, man. Listen. If we're going to get Steve Austin versus Kevin Owens at WrestleMania, what do, do you think it will be a match or just an interaction? Because, like, they could easily have Austin show up and say, like, I heard you've been talking trash about Texas. Give him three stunners, I, and that's it. I, I think if they are going to, like, the worst way to do it, which I would still be satisfied, the best mm-hmm. worst way to do it okay. is that you do what The Rock did with Luke Harper. Okay. Where he showed up, he ripped the tracksuit off, his gear was there, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he beat him in like 30 seconds. Like, yeah. I don't want yeah. I don't want that. I don't want that to count as a match, but you could do something for a couple minutes. Yeah. Um. I, listen, I'm looking forward to seeing Austin. I just want to hear that glass break. I think it would, not that it would do save it, do the it, day. Do it. Ah, ah, <laughs> my stack of dimes. I think it would save the day in a certain regard, and it's Texas. They need something big, so why not bring out like your Texas guys? Undertaker probably, Stone Cold. Well, there's another piece to this. Sean. Uh, reports coming out, and Dave uh, said this, that there's another le- Austin-level person on this card. Austin-level. Gotta be The Rock. I mean, you could do you could do a thing with Dwayne at the end, mm-hmm. right? You, Taker. Right, you could have Taker have his final send home match because mm-hmm. he, you know they are in Texas. They could put him in the Hall of Fame finally. It's like a half ass Hall of Fame, but they could do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know they're doing it. They're doing the Hall of Fame after SmackDown, mm-hmm. right? It's like ten to midnight, ten thirty yeah. to midnight, whatever they're doing. How are you going to get people to stay? Do you want to stay? No. You go to SmackDown, you watch it, you got a busy weekend anyway, you want to stay till midnight to, to for the Hall of Fame? No, I'm, I'm unless, an early bird. <laughs> unless, I know, we're bo- both dirty birds and early birds. Yeah, exactly. Unless, you know, you have you have a, a Undertaker moment. Mm-hmm. So, listen, all of this is possible. I'm excited for this. We're talking about WrestleMania now. We were kind of like, eh, about the whole thing. Mm-hmm. But can you, can you sell 80,000 tickets if Austin's in there? For for one of the nights, I think so. Can you sell another eighty thousand if if the Undertaker's? Yeah, just for the entrance alone, I think they can. You know, it's going to be fun because so many people like love to travel to the show. You know, it's going to be a sellout. Are they going to break records? Who knows? Well, the, I I think they will break a WrestleMania record by mm-hmm. having it two nights. Okay. What what other matches do you want to see Austin be in? 
Because uh, it comes, it does come in threes. Him, and, him it, okay, let's do three. Okay, okay. him and Kevin, uh, obviously, him and Bill. Boom. Yeah, um, Bill, first name basis, huh? Him and Bill. <laughs> yeah, that's what he told me when I went to go pick up his. You know, hey, you want to date my daughter? Don't call me Mister Goldberg. Call me Bill. Call me Billiam. Billiam. <laughs> call me Billiam. Billiam Goldberg. Uh, give me your third. Do we dare go back to Austin Rock as like the last blowout? Or? I I wouldn't want to see. I I, I want Rock and and uh, Roman to be the Aust- match. Austin Roman, Austin Roman, Austin Brock. Uh, you know what? That's the one. Austin Brock. Austin Brock. Yeah. But how would you do? Like, what what would be the story? Oh, Brock would that? have to murder him. Right. Yeah, he would have to. That it would be. You know. Would it be the poetic justice of Austin not jobbing to Brock? Austin 20 could years be ago? Goldberg. Austin could one hundred percent be Goldberg. Yeah. Austin cannot be Lesnar. Okay. And I think Lesnar should beat him with a bear hug. Ooh. Can like he beat that. Hogan like that? Yes. That's my Hogan uh, dangling. You want to see it? <laughs> yeah, please. Can you do Hogan um, raising his arm at a sleeper hold, hold on, on two? Uh, 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 hold on. Like, <laughs> this is a visual medium. <laughs> always my favorite. That is always my favorite. O- always the uh, best. Listen, man, I think this is a lot of fun, and we should have fun with this. The speculation is fun. Uh, regardless, we're going to get something pretty cool the next couple of weeks, you know, between yeah. uh, AEW debuts, mm-hmm. which we'll get into AEW next, uh, the WrestleMania buildup. Uh, we'll talk about the Saudi show, Elimination Chamber, which we'll be doing a watch on. Are you here Saturday? Oh, hell yeah, Oh, dude. hell yeah. You want to order pizza? I thought we were doing sandwiches. You want to do, sam- do sandwiches? do sandwiches. I thought we were doing sandwiches today. I thought we were doing sandwiches Saturday. Oh, you want to make sandwiches? Yeah, whatever. We'll or I can order out. from Milk Farm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big, big, meaty Italian you, sandwiches. What do you want to do for lunch today? Gabagool. You want to do Gabagool today? Uh, so let's uh, let's go into this. Uh, where are we? We are at uh, AW Battle of the Belts. Okay. will air April 16th. It's going to be taped the night before in Dallas. Yes. So uh, Battle of the Belts 2 won't be live. Uh, Undertaker's going to show up. No, don't. <laughs> That's a joke. Don't um, say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> uh, 205 Live has been retired and replaced with NXT Level Up airing in the same Friday time slot on Peacock. I mean, that's essentially what happened to it, right? You had a bunch yeah. of people in developmental on that show. This is one of those Mandela effect things because I thought uh, 205 Live has been was dead. It became weird. Okay. Like They started having people that aren't 205 pounds on there. Like you would have like like some weird big dudes on on that card, like the Viking Raiders. Yeah, like it was all over the place. It, it really became like something ridiculous. So it makes sense for them to change it. Uh, NXT also hired former uh, Ring of Honor backstage reporter Quinn McKay, the Bowtie Girl, uh, now going by Kelly Kincaid. Kelly Kincaid is such a East Coast wrestling name. You it know really many Kincaids is. I know, like in wrestling. Yeah, uh, and uh, Mickey J, referee. It was on the SmackDown brand for a while. It passed away. Um, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. You want to, you want to just go really quick into the NXT Vengeance Day stuff? Yeah, let's run down that All card right. really quick. It was a fun show. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of energy to it. Uh, Pete Dunne beat Tony D'Angelo in a weaponized steel cage match. That was fun. Uh, Toxic Attraction beat Indy Hartwell and Persia Parada to retain the Women's Tag Team Championships. That was fun. Uh, Grayson Waller and LA Knight cut promos on each other. Great. Um. I kind of do feel like LA Knight spinning his wheels a little bit. He's I want to see more. Leave. You think, think so? Yeah. No, well, he's going to get called up. All right. Uh, Carmelo Hayes beat Cameron Grimes, who retained a North American Championship. That was a good match. The Creed Brothers with Malcolm Bivens defeated MSK to win the 2022 Dusty Men's Roads <laughs> Tag Team Classic. Men's, Men's Dusty, Dusty Roads Tag Classic match team. Uh, you had the Imperium promo interrupted by Solo Sokoa. Lot of Uso and Walter chance here. Uh, Braun Breaker beat Santos Escobar to retain the NXT Championship. Dolph Ziggler <sighs> interrupted, and Ciampa stopped him. They will face off next week. Ciampa was also on Raw. Ciampa was also on Raw. Uh, this is interesting. Okay, cool. They're doing stuff. Uh, ratings were better than yeah. the previous week. I think they were at like five and a quarter, and last week they were at 400,000. Is Dolph flat. moving the needle? Dolph is moving the needle. Uh, AEW Dynamite last night, and this will lead into all the other AEW stuff. CM Punk versus MJF match announced. Uh, the show opened up with CM Punk sitting in the ring, crisscross applesauce style, with a box. <laughs> and, you know, he's cutting. Kinda... <laughs> you thought that was funny. I thought that was really funny. <laughs> uh, I. 
I'll tell you, you know, he he's he sits there and he's cutting this promo and he's like, you want to be like Piper? And he's talking about a steel cage. I'm like, mm. oh my God, they're going to do like a war games match. Yeah. Like, oh, a hell in a cell. Maybe they're going to do their <laughs> own hell in a cell, a steel cage with the roof covered. Perfect. I thought you could do something thing. interesting, you know, like, yeah. I, like I'm thinking all this stuff and I'm like, and he keeps talking about Piper in Portland. I'm like, is he going to do a dog collar thing? And he pulls out Bang. the dog collars. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's going to be a bloody fight. I don't know how I feel. Like, Cody was in a dog collar match, right? Oh, this yeah. This is the second AEW Great one? Great one, yeah. How do you feel about the dog collar matches? I think it depends on the performers and if the performers are, like, main event players like these guys are, then it's going to be awesome. It's going to be bloody. It's going to be great. I think uh, MJF sells like an old school heel, so that's always fun to watch, you know? Yeah. And then you also have, like, the outside interference thing with Punk. Um, Mox could get involved. It's. I think this is going to be fun. Um, he did the the Piper references. I do find very interesting because they've been constantly doing that over the last few weeks. And also, yeah. one of my favorite parts of that promo was Punk taking out the picture of young MJF meeting him at a sign at a meeting read. Yeah, yeah, very very good touch. Uh, so P uh, Piper Valentine is the one. I, I I suggest people check it out. Yeah, very bloody. Yeah. Uh, he called MJF to the stage just so you could show him the picture. Uh, and they go right into Daniel uh, Brian Danielson and Lee Moriarty. Fun match, very fun match. <clears throat> Danielson looks great. I mean, his style is so different now, where yeah. he's become such like a you know Matt wrestler, and he's teaching Lee, and they do the whole thing. Danielson won while flexing, and he had him in a um, he had him in a submission essentially, where his arm was. I forgot what the name the name was called. What do they call the move? Do you remember the, the submission? Lock? No, no, no. He had him. Uh, like almost locked in with his legs and his mm -hmm. arm was up so it caused circulation to stop and he passed out the triangle choke was it was it a triangle it was uh yeah it was a modified triangle i don't know what I they think. called yeah. they called it something I, or maybe i'm hallucinating this uh mox <laughs> comes out afterwards and he answers D brian's offer says that uh he needs to bleed they need to bleed together before they could team together great promo mm -hmm. um i love how gripping Mox's promos always are, you know, like he has, he always has the crowd eating out of his hand. Yeah. Yeah. A uh, great promo. And, uh, they're going to have a match. It was a triangle lock. There you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, face of the revolution qualifier Wardlow defeated Max Caster. Max Caster is fantastic. Oh uh, yeah. I really like him. I like the rap. Is he your favorite rapper? He's my favorite rapper of all time. <laughs> Max Caster. Uh, Thought this was okay. It was yeah. fine. Wardlow defeated him. Wardlow's moving on, so they can see the stories building there. Hmm. I want to see Wardlow and Keith Lee. I think that's gonna. That's what we're gonna get. Right. I want to see that. Big boys. Hangman Page confrontation with Adam Cole. Hangman comes out with Tony Schiavone in the ring, hmm. and Cole comes out. Uh, this ends with Cole and uh, Red Dragon brawling with Paige and the Dark Order. I don't, I'm not crazy about the Dark Order thing with Hangman. You think it's run its course? I think it's run its course. I think Hangman needs to be alone. The Dark Order stuff is interesting because, you know, arguably at the height of it, it was with Brody, right? Yeah. I think, you know, after Brody's unfortunate passing, you had a lot of fun with them and Hangman, but I think the influx of new signings kind of hurt them a little yeah. bit in the regard of like they're not featured every week. You know, they're kind of, I don't want to say spinning their wheels, but they're just not on TV, you know, like, and this was what, at the first hour maybe? Yeah. You know, so I think that's really interesting. It's cool that they came out. I think there needs to be more done with the Dark Order, regardless if it's with Paige or not. Uh, and I liked Adam Cole's promo about saying like, oh yeah, you know what they used to call you? The other Adam. Yeah, that was a good line. Yeah, I think you you said that a couple of weeks ago. Battle of the Adams. Battle of the Adams. Um, you know, I do want to say this though. Like, Hangman is where is he on the card with this? You know what I mean? Mm. Like, think about think about the buzz around AEW right now. Cody Rhodes. Yeah. Um, MJF and CM Punk, Danielson and Mox and Mox. Yeah. Uh, and then maybe now you have Hangman. Very interesting. But you also have all the other elements and the other surprises. Mm -hmm. So they, I mean. In a weird way, this is a positive because that means there's your top tier is very strong. Dense, yeah. It's so dense that your world title, your champion, is kind of like third mm -hmm. on the list. But I think they need to position him a little bit better. I think this is going to be a great match, him yeah. and Adam Cole. Yeah. And this is going to lead into something big here. Santana and Ortiz defeated Chris Jericho and Jake Hager. Great very match. good match. Great match, yeah. 
Uh, Jericho looked good. He was moving much quicker. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's stre- He's lost some weight. Uh, you could see. You know, he did that. He did that running bulldog, and he he got some height that he hasn't gotten yeah. in years. So he looked good. Uh, Eddie Kingston was in Santana and Ortiz's corner. Eddie helped them get the pin. Thought this was good. Is that your trio going forward? I think that's your trio. Yeah, but who's on? Who's on? Uh, listen, you could do LAX again. Yeah, you know. Do like a new version of LAX. New version, yeah. Um, I think this is setting up for possibly Hager to be on his own for a bit and Jericho leaving to do like tour stuff. Well, we're going to get Jericho and uh, Kingston for sure. Yeah. Do you think that we're going to get that at Revolution? I think so. Yeah. Uh, I like when Hager was in the ring with Ortiz. He was yelling at him like, we're boys. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. 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 We're buddies. Very good job. Uh, no DQ match. Thunder Rosa, Mercedes Martinez. What did you think of this? That's fun. It was fun. It was fun. I like Thunder Rosa coming out as the bride slash Bruce Lee. Oh, is that what she did? Yeah, she came out in the yellow, oh, the uh, yellow Game yeah. of Death outfit. TNT Championship. Sammy Guevara defeated Darby Allen. Andrade and Matt Hardy got involved to cost uh, Darby the match. I really enjoyed this, and I really enjoyed how, I really enjoy how over-the-top Andrade is. Oh, he's he's really transcended into something awesome, but and he doesn't even wrestle. No, he's a cartoon. He is a cartoon. Him and Matt Hardy are great cartoons on AEW, and I mean that as like I like a, that he's trying to like buy a Sting's child. Like he's trying to buy his boy. Yeah, <laughs> come here, give me your boy, give me your boy. Uh, fantastic stuff. Andrade is doing mm-hmm. some really cool stuff there, and that's it. Uh, oh, yes, we we there will be a third member of the House of Black, right? Yes, and it looks like it's going to be uh, Buddy Matthews. Very interesting. Was mm-hmm. he, what? Didn't he lose an eye also? I want to say yeah. Did he lose an eye? I think so. I think they did with the Rey Mysterio angle, where everybody was losing eyeballs. Everybody, I, I'm, I'm, I, dude, that era is like a blur to me. I think Seth Life is put such out a blur. His eye, yeah. D- did did Buddy Murphy lose an eye as well? He did. He I, did. I think he did when he, they put him when they shacked him up with Rey Mysterio's daughter. And I think... Well, you want to date my daughter? You want to date my daughter? You want to date me? Yeah. You want to... <laughs> I, and then Seth, I think, put his eye out. A lot of eye stuff in pro wrestling in the last few years, right? Why? Like, why is that the thing? Why are we spitting in eyes? And why are we poking eyes? Seth and Ray. Some of uh, the chat room confirmed this. Malachi Black. Alistair Black, right? Yeah. He, he had an eye thing. Pac had an eye thing. Mox had an eye thing. Santana had an eye thing. Uh, I, who else? I feel like everybody everybody who was cool at one point had, had the eye thing going. Uh, Julie Hart. Bizarre. Yeah. All right. Julia Hart lost an eye. Uh, this is the, the eye is the new cast. Oh, interesting. No, he did not. The angle was just dropped. I thought okay. he lost an eye. There yeah. is, you know what? You want to talk about the split in the universe? The Mandela I am, effect. I am I, the Mandela effect. I am 100% that he lost an eye. Yeah, same here. 100%. I don't care what, what the, I don't, I don't care about footage. It's same just here. like how I said Bill Goldberg is wrestling Steve Austin. <laughs> oh, boy. I don't care for proof. All right. Uh, that, you know what? That's going to get taken out of, that entire sentence is going to take, get taken out I'm of context. I'm just having fun. I, I, I really don't care. <laughs> uh, you got AEW Rampage. Uh, tomorrow's lineup, Adam Cole versus 10, Jay White versus Trent Beretta. Listen, man, Jay White cutting that promo last night, fantastic. I, I'm excited. Dude, you know, I hope, I hope, I hope it, it, it clicks. You know? I think it will click. I hope it clicks because he's very, he's young too. What, how old is he? Not even 30. No, he's not even 30. I think he's like 26. 20, Jay White. 29. 29, uh, yeah. He's born in 92. Great promo. He also said, I believe the other day, that why can't he have, you can't, why can't you have Bullet Club and Impact, New Japan, and AEW? Because they're really leaning heavy into the Bullet Club stuff. And the Bucks have been off um, AEW TV. Not off, off, but like they haven't really been featured in anything, right? Ah, Trey says, did you reference Bruce Lee when it was Kill Bill? About Thunder Rosa's outfit. No, I said it was the bride slash Bruce Lee's outfit yeah. from Game of Death. There you go. There you go, bud. You know your Bruce Lee. I know what I'm talking about. You know what you with comic books and stuff, you know what you're talking Movies, about. Movies, comic books. It is wild that the Bullet Club is still yeah. you know, instrumental in every organization. Very cool. I they need that dose of cool again though. You know what? Mm. I got it. I got the hit, Cody stuff. Hit me with the cool stuff. Go ahead. He's going to do the Jeff Jarrett gimmick. Everywhere he goes. He's just going to be like Jeff Jarrett. Okay. He's going to go. People are going to boo him. Mm-hmm. He's going to go, ain't I great? And he's going to, you know, get his dog to bite somebody and then mm-hmm. pin and win the world title. That's what I want them to do. Him and Jarrett should team up. GCW champion. I... Wasn't he? No, not GCW. Uh, uh, Global Force Wrestling. GFW. I 
want to see that. That's the first thing that came to my head. I was like, is Cody going to make his own GFW? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. We'll, Got, we'll see what happens. Guys from Queens Wrestling. Guys from Queens Wrestling. Uh, you're also going to get Serena Deeb's 5-Minute Challenge and the Face of the Revolution Choir Fire. Qu- choir Fire. Quiet Fire. <laughs> choir Fire. The Face of the Revolution Qualifier Powerhouse Haas versus Dante Martin. Uh, that's going to be a good one. That is going to be a good one. You think the Revolution stuff is going to come down to all the big boys? Like Hobbs, Wardlow, and Keith Lee? Yeah, dude, I, I like that. I like the big the big, big meat boys. Where's Brian Cage? Ah, where is... So, Brian Cage did an indie show. I forgot for what company it was. Mm-hmm. And Max Caster was on the card. And I think they were like on opposite sides. And Caster cut a promo on him, pretty much saying like, you're done mm-hmm. with him. You're done with Dynamite. Like, ragging on him. Uh, like, where the hell you been? You haven't been on TV. Huh. Uh, he's another one. I, I, He has some issues. With WWE, with AEW, is, you want to add another one yeah. to, the, to the lineup at WWE. I mean, he would fit tremendously over there. Big I monster dude. Yeah, big dude. I think, uh, do you think he's going to be Cody's inaugural GFW champion? Yeah, you want, yeah, that'll be it. <laughs> AEW Dynamite 223 next week's lineup. House of Black, Malachi Black and Brody King versus Death Triangle. Kingston mm. and Jericho face to face and a tag team Royale, Battle Royale for the top contendership. That's going to be fun. Yeah. All right. Let's go uh, WWE notes. Oh, real quick. Yeah. Did you think Miro was going to show up last night at the main event? No. Why? Uh, because of the TNT championship. Oh, you know what? For a minute, I was thinking, like, where the hell is he? But mm-hmm. I, I, I... Neck injury. Is it, oh, he's hurt? Apparently, he's like, he's, he's banged up. Who knows if that's, like, fully k or not? WWE notes, Lesnar suplexed Austin Theory in the opening segment of Raw. By the way, Steve Austin... Uh, Steve Austin. Uh, Brock Lesnar <laughs> uh-huh. on... Pat McAfee show. Yeah. How fantastic was he? He's great, man. He's a lunatic. I like loose and go- loosey goosey Brock is great. What's up with the cowboy hat? That's his thing. He's is, a cowboy. He's a ra- he's a rancher. He's a big fan of Yellowstone now. He loves is that what he said? I, no. <laughs> I'm assuming. I'm assuming. I know a lot of people have bought cowboy hats because of that show. Just uh, watches Yellowstone. She likes that. And oh, Yellow Jack. No, she, he's a big Yellow Jackets fan. Okay. <laughs> Huge Yellow Jackets fan. Uh, Alexa Bliss is cured. Oh, wonderful. And is now in the chamber match. Great. Cool. Uh, this is uh, from SmackDown. Uh, Rousey and Naomi versus Sony and Charlotte made official. Friday segment is going to be apparently something else. And there's going to be an IC title match this Friday. And this Saturday, Elimination Chamber. Elimination Chamber live from Saudi Arabia. From the Jihad Superdome. They're bringing 12 women over three matches on this one. Elimination Chamber match for the WWE title. Brock Lesnar, Seth Rollins, Austin Theory, Matt Riddle, AJ Styles, and Bobby Lashley. You know, you really want to bury that Shane McMahon story? You sign Cody Rhodes. <laughs> right? Do the reversey. Like, what yeah. if, what if uh, Shane shows up on Dynamite next week? <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, Elimination Chamber match for the Raw Women's Title shot at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Do drop Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, Nikki Ash, and Bianca Belair versus Alexa Bliss as well. Yes. WWE Universal title match. Bill Goldberg versus Roman Reigns. Raw women's title match. Lita versus Becky Lynch. Great. Lita said that she doesn't have any plans beyond this match with WWE. Is she going to take the title and leave? I'm going to take the title and leave. I uh, do you think this is where uh, this? Do you think Goldberg beats Roman and takes the title in Saudi Arabia? So there's something wonky happening, right? Okay. Isn't that the story that yeah. you're, there's going to be a lot of twists and turns? Okay, that, all right. That's that, that's what was said. Twists and turns. Uh, they are also treating these like big events now. Yes. Uh, and and you know what? I think I think Nick Khan looked at this like guys. This is a huge show. We're in a stadium. We're yeah. in another country. Maybe we should like treat this like a real pay per view. And I think you know like they're really going for it. Yeah. Uh, where were we? You got the Viking Raiders versus the Usos yeah. for the Smack Team, Smack Team, SmackDown Tag Team Titles, and you have a Falls Count Anywhere match. Is somebody coming in? What was that? You have a, you're hearing it too. You, yeah, you have a Falls Count Anywhere match. Bad Cat Boss versus Drew McIntyre, and a tag team match: Ronda Rousey and Naomi versus Sony Deville, and SmackDown SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte Flair. Yeah, does that close the show, or does that start the show? No, it has to start. The show. It's going to be Goldberg and Roman, probably. No, uh, no. Well, they have like the big chamber matches, which or, or the chamber will probably do it. I wonder how. I'm going to ask you something. Yeah. How much do you think that costs? To, do you think they shipped everything over there, or do yeah. you think they gave them specs to build it? No, no, no. They have to ship it. Wow. I, I'm, I, if, I wonder if they have like located in like somewhere in Europe, mm-hmm. right? They have like a little warehouse 
where they store all the shit for European stuff. Because that's going to cost so much money to ship that thing. Yeah. You know, that, that, that alone is a lot of money to ship to Saudi Arabia, that monstrosity of a cage. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's bananas. Dude. Yeah. All right. Uh, Q&A time? Q&A time. Do you, do you want to do question? Do you want to do Q&A or do you want to do the, uh, the viewer's choice booking or do you want to save that for another oh, time? Oh, let's do, uh, let's, let's go down the list. Okay. Yeah, whatever we have. So we had a poll for the yeah. 400th episode fantasy booking viewer's choice. Okay. And these were the options, right? We put this poll out. Scenario one. What if Cody, Kenny, and the Bucks signed with WWE instead of AEW rebook of the 2019 lanes? Okay. Scenario number two. In 2014, CM Punk doesn't leave. Brian and Reigns don't get hurt. What does the 2015 Rumble look like with Brock still scheduled to face the champion at SummerSlam? Okay. You got one of those for me later? Yeah. Uh, scenario number three. Triple H didn't blow his quad in 2001, and he is part of the invasion angle. Okay, that's a good one, too. Scenario four. <laughs> After winning the title at Money in the Bank in 2011, Punk leaves WWE and doesn't return until the 2012 and that would Royal be June Rumble. 2011 to January 2012 got it so uh unfortunately the link isn't working so can we get who won somebody to yeah mg who yeah. can you let us know who won i think it was triple h i want to say that you're right i think it was triple h that won mm -hmm. so uh we're booking this quick we're booking this quick okay. I would say if, if Hunter was not hurt, right? Let's go back to, okay, let's go back. Um, <laughs> WrestleMania. This is a, this is a 400th uh, episode bonanza because I remember in the early days, you would just book the invasion. Every day. Relentlessly. All day. Relentlessly. Okay, so WrestleMania 17, Twitter is down. Wow. Okay, that's why. So WrestleMania 17... Hunter wrestled The Undertaker. Right? Okay. This was the beginning of the invasion. Yes. So Hunter then... Uh, Austin goes heel, right? Okay. They do the two-man power trip Great. over the summer. Love it. Uh, he blows out his quad. If he didn't blow out the quad, I think the feud was going to be him and Austin. With, with who being he the heel and who being the face. Austin remaining the heel and doing... Um... Austin remains the heel. Mm-hmm. Uh, or he, okay, they, I'm gonna I'm gonna fantasy book big time. Okay, okay, go ahead. Uh, with with different variables in play. Sure, the invasion angle is happening. Great. Uh, Triple H is healthy. Same, Austin is same healthy. Same players. Same players. Everything okay. is fine, right? I would have Austin stay on Raw, Team Raw. Mm -hmm. I would have Triple H defect to, to WCW. Okay, and this would allow Nash and Hall to come in. Or are Ooh, we okay. doing? Or are we doing? All the same players are involved. The only difference is that. Triple H is not hurt. Well, if we do both, I think all the same players are involved, and I think you get a double swerve where um, Austin still is Team WCW okay. and Triple H is still Team WWE, but then they the roles get reversed, and then you get that uh, like one of the, my favorite part about the uh, of the invasion was Jr. losing his mind when Austin became a face again and stunned. Oh yeah, everybody yeah, yeah. that was a huge moment, back. right? Yeah. I think you keep that, but the buildup is hit, like the final person to get stunned is Triple H. I would say Triple H becomes the first undisputed champion. Interesting. Also, okay. I would have that be a off, off. Really? Instead yeah, of Jericho? Instead of Jericho. Okay. I like that. Because that was a whole situation. They didn't want to mm -hmm. do. They, they, they ended up having to do Jericho. I think if you want to do fantasy fantasy and have Triple H become terrorizing and gets hall and nash and x-pac that would have also been a great invasion that would have been a great invasion too uh, i i think that there was a lot that you could have done here tons that you could have done here because mm -hmm. he missed out that whole invasion angle was he around when scott hall and kevin nash showed up yeah he had to have been march or was he still no hurt? no 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 he was back march 2000 yeah. uh, no way out 2002 Oh no! I'm so sorry. Yeah. I have skipped the year. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. Mixed, I, I mixed up the years. I'm so sorry. So Hall and Nash are nowhere to be. Mm -hmm. He was back by the time that Hall and Nash were there. So he was back in January. He won the Rumble that year, right? right? He right. won the 2002 Rumble. 
Uh, he had his match with Jericho that should not have gone on when it went on because mm-hmm. it was a dead match. I think that you would have escalated the 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 rise of Triple H. Okay. You know, I, I think it would have been just pushed forward. I think there would have been a better chance at the Sean stuff earlier. Interesting. Bless you. Thank you. Um, because Sean came back in 2002 as well. Right. So I, I think a lot of that stuff would have been pushed forward. Where, you know, maybe the big reveal is that Hall and Nash return at the end of the invasion. You know, the other thing I was talking okay. to Lance about. Yeah. And, and I think this is a nice little tidbit that nobody talks about. You know what killed the whole WCW thing, right? Was that match in uh, Tacoma. Which was the book, book Booker T, T and uh, Buff Bagwell, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? That match killed all the WCW plans where Linda was supposed to get ownership of Raw. Oh. Because the divorce was happening at that point. Right, right, So right. she gets that, hands it to Shane, and uh-huh. WCW Nitro becomes the Monday spot, and SmackDown becomes the WWE spot. Interesting. That all went out the window because of the horrible match that they had. Do you know who was supposed to have that match with Booker T? Who? Lance Storm. Oh, get out of here. Lance told, uh, he was on uh, Russell, Wrestling Observer Live with me on Sunday. Wow. He's like, I'm like, oh my God, imagine if it was Lance, but they thought Lance wasn't WCW enough, which it's true. That is true, yeah. You know? But imagine if it was Lance Storm and Booker T. They have this tremendous match. And mm. that whole concept goes away that they're going to kill WCW. And they actually move forward with the WCW plan. Ooh, fascinating. A lot shifts there, right? A um, whole lot shifts there. Because that's what that's heralded as like one of the worst main events of all time. It was right? it was a doom match. It, it was the end. That, that killed the <laughs> it whole. It was the end. It was the end. But they were also in Tacoma, which was not a WCW yeah. property. And I thought it was so stupid because... You've told your audience that these guys are the bad guys. Right. For 10 years. That they suck. They're below you. Exactly. And now, all of a sudden, you're putting them on TV. What do you think people are going to do? Would Booker... If if the match with Lance did happen, would Booker T have been he even been more cheered. elevated? Yeah. I think so. I think, okay. I think Lance would have made him look like a million bucks. Mm-hmm. And Booker would have been the one that was getting cheered. Totally. Interesting. Interesting. Buff Bagwell. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Everything changes on a like listen, man, everything changes. Wrestling's weird. The wrestling is weird. Yeah. Uh I, I like that Triple H stuff. Yeah. I think that if you I think at the end of the day, if Triple H did not get hurt, yeah. You would have had the two man power trip have like a feud. You would have done mm. something and maybe maybe Hunter would have been on Team WCW. Or they both start with Team WCW and then one of them defects. And then one of them defects, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I do think, you know, like the end of that, like you need Austin turning face and stunning everybody. Right. And the last person, again, should have should be Triple H if that was the case. And then you have their match. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Fascinating. Stuff. Yeah. Very fascinating. You've waited 10 years to do a solid. And inv- this is your best invasion booking. You think so? I, I, think I'm so. Not, I, I felt that it wasn't that great. I feel like this was your most solid without any wild shit happening. You know? Because then Austin could recruit Sting. If you're going fantasy fantasy, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Who can we get to beat these guys? There's the NWO facing us. Well, you know, Sting. Nash was always coming. Yeah. Nash was always going to come. It's just a matter of they want to sit on those contracts. I think if they did have that WCW show, WWE would have enticed them to be bought out of that contract, those Turner deals. I'm, almost, I'm very convinced of that. That's very interesting. Yeah. Um, Speaking brother, of brother, brother, speaking of a fantasy scenario, yeah. what if Cody shows up on WWE TV resurrecting the NWO? Oh, man. I don't know. I don't want to see the NWO. Yay or that. nay? I say nay. Okay. I think he needs I think he needs to be put into. I like his Homelander shit. But with John Cena as part of it. Void John Cena. Yeah, okay. Bring him back from the vo- What if he resurrects him? He called brings the boogeyman in to resurrect him from the from the void. Supernatural power. Bray's void. And Bray's gone. He's never yeah. getting out. He became he, I mean, look at it this way. He never he never got out and he's peacemaker now. It's oh my god. It's very interesting. But like, Peacemaker's fantastic. Peacemaker's awesome. And uh he's so I think good. Season two. Yeah. Season two's coming. Um the other big question I think on people's minds is where is Wyndham Rotunda? Uh, we get, that's we, a great question. We're inundated I know, with I know. messages every day. People want to know where is Wyndham Rotunda. And, uh, great question. What? It is a great question. This is an unsolved mystery of wrestling at this point. All right. You want to do some questions? Let's do it. Cool. All right, guys. Q&A time, boys and girls. Uh, we're going to take some questions, and then uh, we have a little treat for you guys at the end. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Let's take a look at the Super Chats. 
Uh, we got one from Cadillac Carson here, four ninety nine. SRS Andrew and Meltzer would be one heck of a stable. Yeah, but uh, we gotta we worship Meltzer's arms. That's how it works. <laughs> and you know that's how we come out. Sean is on one shoulder, mm. I'm on the other, and he just walks around flexing, and we just sit on the shoulder in like bikinis. <laughs> oh yeah, Your yeah. bikinis. Now? Bikini, baby. Is yeah. is in this situation is Melter Dalton Castle, and you guys are the boys? No, he's like that Hogan picture where he has <laughs> okay. the babes on his shoulder. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, this is from James Mordor. How would you guys book the Cody Rhodes character in AEW if he chose not to leave? Congrats on 400, fellas. Almost Friday. Um. I, I I always enjoy the the Cody stuff. Yes, I, yeah. I like that he was kind of this baby face that got booed and wouldn't mm-hmm. turn. I, I his matches were fantastic, and what a great way to end his AEW run. Yeah, you know, uh, five star match to begin it, five star match to end it. You know, he really went yeah. all out on that match. I think so. No pun intended. Um, I think, uh, yeah. You know what? I would have booked the guy to win the world championship at some point. That's another weird thing too, right? He he, he kind of screwed himself with that. I thought that was silly. I'm going to tell you. Okay, tell me. Uh, I, I thought that was silly yeah. that they did that where he won't ever challenge again. Mm. But, you know, when and if he comes back, he could say, look, I got a whole new contract now. Mm-hmm. That's off. I want the title now. Big things that are coming. Yeah. Very interesting. Listen, when you, Meltzer and SRS, get your shit together. Yeah. And, you know, it's, when you guys release the narrative, I want to know. I want to be on the ground floor. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is from the Joel. The Illuminati, right? It's the Illuminati, yeah. yeah. This is from Joel Wood, uh, Super Chat 1999. Thank you, Joel. Uh, I have a three-part question, part one. Let's go through these individually. What percentage would you give Cody returning to WWE? What percentage? I, um. 70 70 okay yeah. i'll agree with you uh part two what percentage do you give brandy joining wwe uh very little 10 percent. i go for 50 percent. okay uh what are the odds of cody keeping his current music which he owns he owns that music yeah oh that's interesting well if he owns it he could play it if wwe wants to let him do it uh, I think that would be cool, but I doubt it. I, you know, like regardless of what it is, I think there's still that mandate of like, it needs on WWE television. It needs to be a WWE creation, right? Like, look at what happened to broken Matt Hardy. Yeah. Yeah. Like that was gold. You're printing gold and they couldn't do it. And they yeah. couldn't do it. Look at the bullet club stuff. Like the OC, the club like that. You could have printed money with that. Right. And somebody backstage was like, no, this isn't ours. We can't do it. So, by the way, uh, CYN, control your narrative. Mm -hmm. EC3 and and Braun Strowman are starting their, launching their own wrestling company. Oh, boy. Uh, They're going to live announce, live announces, live announces, live announcement. First two live events, 3-5 in Orlando and 3-31 in Dallas, Texas. Network TV deal announcement imminent. Interesting. Ooh, fascinating. Fascinating stuff. Um, we got another super chat here from Andrew Barker. Yeah. Five bucks. Another Andrew. Another Andrew. They all live in my head. <laughs> what are like uh, like Herman's head? You mm-hmm. remember that show? Great, w- great show. What are the odds Cody is the new creative lead of NXT just so Vince can flip the bird to Triple H? I mean, there's no beef between Hunter and Triple H. Uh, I, 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 I'm sorry, uh, uh, Vince and Triple H. I yeah. don't think there's like a like a like a beef here at all uh i i think that's like a bizarre story that we're hearing but i don't know what cody wants to do does he want to be hands-on with business the business side i think he's a great mind i mean it, it would be a shame and or, or waste if he's not but you know there's a lot of this stuff like cody wants creative does cody want creative control do you get right. that in wwe i right. think i think if you're a big enough name then you get some but yeah you know interesting interesting i mean like when the bucks were about to get signed Triple H was really throwing a lot of money at them a few years yeah. ago. Yeah. You know, very yeah. interesting. all interesting stuff. Uh, this is from Soccer Stash on Twitter. How much is Meltzer paying you? Oh, so much. Ask Matt Men. God, my God. I'm getting paid so much money. Uh, let's see. This is from M on Twitter. Do you see Seth Rollins in the U.S. title match at WrestleMania, or will he be there to do something else? Do you see Rollins in a U.S. title match at WrestleMania, or will he be there? I mean, I think him and Cody could have a great match. Oh, yeah. 
for sure. I mean, that'd be a fantastic match. Great. Everybody, I feel like your top guys could work with everybody, right? Yeah. And by the way, that US title, you could put it on a Seth Rollins and, you know, mm -hmm. do something cool with it again. It would elevate it. Uh, this is from uh, Chris Farrell. Five bucks. Thank you, Chris. Any significance to Cody not mentioning JR in his farewell? Lots of people mentioned, but I, not him. I saw that, and I, I don't, I really don't think there was any kind of like animosity. Uh, yeah. Like, I, I, I don't, you know, it's like, well, he didn't mention a lot of other people. You right. know, he didn't thank a lot of other people. Like, why, you know, I know that him and Tony are close. So the, obviously he mentioned Tony Schiavone, but. Some you got to leave people's names out. Mm -hmm. I I think maybe you just didn't think of thanking him. Maybe they're not that close, you know. Yeah, you know, like you don't know. Um, you don't. It, it, I always considered like pro wrestling kind of like a high school. You know, like you don't talk to everybody. Yeah, you know, people are there. You know, like this guy or that this girl exists, but you know, maybe they're not in your circle. They're not in your quote unquote click, right? Mm. All that stuff is very interesting to me. Uh, we have. Another five bucks from Cadillac Carson. What comes first, trios title in AEW or Veer on Raw? <laughs> Congrats on 400 shows. Homie. Great, great question. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say Veer on Raw. Veer on Raw. All right. We're going to get a Steve Austin match before Veer shows up. <laughs> Cody <laughs> leaves AEW to go back to WWE and Veer's still coming. Veer shows up and Austin just stuns him out of the ring. Uh, this is from Twitch. Good luck, Fale. Ask, hashtag ask Mattman. If we end up getting Knoxville versus Sami Zayn, would you have Zayn drop the IC title to Knoxville? I hate all of that. I don't want to see it. You don't want any of no, the jackass. No you jackass. Want, you don't want Steve-O st stapling people to his nuts. No. Oh, my God. Are they all going to be there? <laughs> you think, think they're all going to be there? I think they're all going to. Wee Man. Wee Man's, Wee gonna Man and wacky Steve -O and... Wee Man's going to kick himself in the head. Uh, this is from uh, Tony Scarf 93 is Cody definitely going to WWE? I mean, he, he uh, mm -hmm. there's no definite, nothing is signed yet, but you know, that's that's the that's the rumor. Uh, this is from James. People Mo at WWE think so. Right. Very interesting. A lot of people at WWE think so. See, that's very interesting because there's so many levels to that deal that, you know, is there is it a possibility that they can keep that as tight lipped as possible until a debut. I don't think they're going to be able to be tight lipped. I think people are going to leak this. Okay. Yeah. Does it, I'd be shocked. I'd be shocked too. Does yeah. it, does it take away a little bit from the Austin thing? I, I do. Well, let's see what happens with the Austin thing. Okay. You know, like I'll give an example on Pat McAfee show, uh, Brock Lesnar said, I understand from the, uh, talking about Austin, I understand from the business aspect mm -hmm. for that time, Steve Lefton didn't want to work with me. It was probably the right decision for him at the time. I don't hold a grudge against it at all. Business is business. Here's a question for you. Does Cody show up in Saudi Arabia in the chamber? I, I wouldn't do it that way. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it that way. No, you wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't have your new signee show up on a show on... Uh international I, soil no i would i would have it i would have it mean like build a story around it first you know here's my question to you Andy yeah. Zarian. how do you book cody de cody's debut in uh wwe who who does he feud with well that's that's the question yeah. like how do you book him debuting and what's his first feud if you were vince mcmahon if you were tony khan if you were stephanie mcmahon writing all the creative i really don't have an answer to that Oh, interesting. I'm stumped with that. I really yeah. am. I'm stumped with it, which I like being stumped with it because then it's going to be unpredictable. Okay. You know? um, I don't know. Interesting. Let me think about it. All right. Uh, this is from James Mortar. Do you guys see Cardona bringing the NWA title to AEW? No, I, I don't. I, I don't know what's going on with that. They really haven't intertwined <laughs> much. I know Cardona went there for like a for like a week and yeah. then left. So. I think Cardona's realized that he doesn't want to um, sign anywhere. This is from Large23. Is there a 90-day clause in AEW contract? I believe so, but I don't think... Hmm. Uh, but Cody's well after that 90 days, right? His contract expired in December. Fascinating. But I don't think he has a 90-day on his. I think they just, they're, they've just they parted ways. I don't know if it's 90 or 30. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm sure once contracts expire, they expired. He could go anywhere. Yeah, he definitely yeah. can't go anywhere because he's not on a contract. What right. what is there? What's the ninety? Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. He could show up. Saturday he could do it. <laughs> WrestleMania. Yeah. Uh, all right. 
This is from Mark H. With all the recent news, do you think WWE will have any huge segments on Raw and SmackDown next week? I think they should capitalize on this for sure. Uh, obviously, they're going to capitalize on Monday after the uh, the Saudi show. That's going to be a big show because stuff's going to happen, obviously, mm-hmm. there. Uh, you're you're getting ready for WrestleMania. You got, I don't know, how many more weeks? Six weeks? One, yeah. two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six, six weeks or so. So, I mean, you, you got to start building your program now, and every week has to be something hot. You know, if Austin shows up in two weeks, what does that do? You know, you right. also have to you also have to set up ticket sales. You have to prepare people exactly. for traveling ticket sales. So if you're doing Austin, if you're going to decide on Austin, you have like two weeks to do it mm-hmm. to get this going. Right. Because you want that five week build, right? Well, you want you want at least a month to give people time to accommodate travel. Right. So I would say probably within the next two weeks, they should be doing something unless, you know, they, they also want to sell more tickets. That's the other part of this. Yeah. It's a, this, this is I get so excited around this time of year. There's all this wacky shit could start happening. Oh, oh, look what I just got. Uh Oh, hang on, guys. We've created a stable. You ready? Breaking news. Yeah. <laughs> I do. somebody just sent this I to me I do like that a lot if you guys can see it it's uh, oh crap all my porn tags are, can you... <laughs> are open just, just watching retro porn on my computer classical porn classic, classical yeah, 1940s Cla- oh I thought you meant from like the 1840s no 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 1940s uh, <laughs> uh, Russell Vogt sent this to me just now uh, I like that he's the higher power but that's a Deacon's the higher oh, power oh no idiot Dinkin <laughs> Like that the little dance that? he just did. He just did a dance. He did like a little wizard move and left. Yeah. Uh, this is from Heather. Heather. Heather Gates. I hope I say that. I'm saying that right. Do you guys see Veer coming before Elias coming back? Okay, sure. Great. I have zero interest in Veer. Everybody's all about Veer. Big I think meme. It, it's even like it's being done like on a comedy level. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, like I have zero interest in Veer. I have nothing against the man. I just have zero interest in the Where's Veer stuff. Uh, this I agree with you. This is from Joe on YouTube. There was a new batch of non-compete clauses that were up this week. Where do you see some of them going? Uh, who's up this week? Uh, Hardy, obviously, mm. is going to go to AEW. They're going to do that Hardy stuff. Um, rumors are that Buddy Murphy's showing up. Yeah. But who's on that? who's on this list of releases? Well, it was the, the, the round of Keith Lee's, right? So, like, Mia Yim, I think, was on there. Ke- well, Keith Lee's there now. Karen but Cross. I, I, Swerve. Okay, Swerve. Mm-hmm. Tegan Knox. I can, tell you, I can tell you that a lot of people want him in AEW. Mm-hmm. People in AEW want him in AEW. Swerve. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him show up there. I think he'd elevate. The yeah. brand a little bit, yeah. you know. He's good. Yeah. Guy's great. Very, very talented. Very. Talented. I, I if I were to take a guess, I would say Storm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, like uh, Swer- Swerve is is AEW bound. Um. Uh, I again, my based on you know, mm-hmm. tons of people talking. Um. I'll give you names. You tell me where Tony Storm would be a, a great get for their women's division for okay. sure. Karen Cross. Um. I'm gonna pass. Interesting. Yeah. NWA. I'm gonna. I, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll tell you off the air. Okay. All right. Interesting. Tegan Knox. I don't know where Tegan would go. Oh, all right. I think Tegan would be a great get for them. Also. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Uh, do you want to do more questions? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's do. do let's do, do a couple uh, more. You want to do a couple more? Yeah. All right. Let's see. Do like three more minutes. This is from uh, BC Knight on Twitch. How quickly should Roxy win the NXT Women's Championship? I say debut match. Against Mandy Rose. Um, I don't know. Can it, really they they've they've that title was so elevated and now it's like a like a nothing. Yeah, they're here for us. Oh, <laughs> did you get a limo? Oh, the beeping is happening in my head again. Oh, boy. Nobody else hears it but me. Uh, I th- I say keep that title on Mandy for a while. Listen, I, I do too, but like, you know, when you, that title was mm-hmm. like the work woman's title. You know what I mean? Think about who was competing for that NXT title. Charlotte, Bailey, yeah. Sasha, pa- I mean, it was, it was 
It was a big deal. It was a big deal. Oscar. Yeah. You know, like you had such elevation. By the way, Asuka should be arriving soon. Mm -hmm. I, I think she's ready. She's good to go. Yeah, she's been posting a lot of wacky videos on her Instagram. Does she? Too. Yeah. Uh, this next one's from Connor. She's in, she's in the cult also. She's Is in she? the Illuminati too. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this next one's from Connor. Can you make a case for Brock Lesnar on wrestling's Mount Rushmore? Oh, of course. What would your case be? Um, listen, it's it, it's it. Who's the biggest draws in the business? That's how I would do it. Forget about really? work. Okay. Let's, let's forget about work. Rate, Who's on right? your Mount Rushmore? Well, the, do you want to do like just business? Just business. Hogan, Bruno, mm -hmm. Cena, uh -huh. Brock. Wow. Uh, actually, Austin, Dwayne, Austin. Well, no, I gotta, I gotta, cut, I gotta cut someone. Okay. Austin. Uh -huh. Okay, I got it. Austin, Hogan, Bruno, and and, and Rock. That's Austin, my... Hogan. Bruno and Rock for business, business, business wrestling, business, business Mount Rushmore. Bus business. Your what's the other Mount Rushmore of wrestling that includes Brock Lesnar? I, I there's an argument. Like it depends mm. on the generation. I don't know. You know what? I wouldn't have him on my like a big man, like like big beefcake champions. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I think he's in the top top <laughs> list of those guys. I don't know. You know, it, it's so hard because you look at like who made the most money. Yeah. You know, and then generationally you go into you know. Post Hogan generation, post post Pope. Well, oh boy, uh -oh. it's over. We gotta do go. it. That's do it. it. You gotta episodes. unplug me right now. <laughs> um, like I would say, like post two thousands, it mm -hmm. would be Cena, Lesnar, um, Hunter. You know, like you would have you would have a different list every every couple decades. I do think though, if you're talking business wise, it was definitely Cena, Austin, mm -hmm. Hogan, and Bruno. Those are key instruments in changing the business okay. and maintaining you know like you talk about the lineage of like bruno san martino that created that big pop in the you know yeah. late 60s 70s and then and then you know hogan took it over 20 years later after hogan who picked up the ball austin did right after austin who picked it up it was you know rock austin but and then it was cena, cena yeah who's now roman it's you know what the, roman and lesnar i i think it's such an interesting question when people ask about mount rushmore's but i feel like there's not enough room for everybody you want to put on that list just you know, just think about it this way okay 20 brock lesnar has been around for 20 years mm -hmm. okay 2002 we started ovw he debuted in two, 2001 he went to ovw debuted yeah. in 2002 this guy has been wrestling for 20 years give me like another era that somebody 20 years in could still be actively wrestling that's like saying okay uh well bruno debuted in what the late 60s so he was wrestling in the late 80s hogan was still doing it right aj styles would be on aj's that on that too but like d but it's more common now yeah than it was like in the attitude era yeah like think about like if we had in that era like you had guys from 20 years ago wrestling still yeah i mean you kind of like but WWE like goldberg, into... goldberg was on top of the <clears throat> wrestling business in 1998 right 22 years ago 24 years ago. I'm so sorry. Who's a guy in 1998 mm -hmm. from 24 years prior could have been in top of the business? That's fast. You're talking 1974. Who was in top of the business in 1974? <laughs> Ric Flair. No, Ric Flair was later. Late, later, later right? like, yeah. A couple of years later. But, I mean, isn't that interesting to look back and think about? And, and what, It really is. I, I mean, 1970. Who? Uh, uh, the. I mean, somebody give me a name. I feel like it's like, you know, like our, our wrestling history. Greg Valentine? Like, I mean, Greg, you know what Greg I mean? Greg Valentine, there you go. Uh, I, it, it, it's, it, it's a fascinating look back, <clears throat> and you think about like, well, you never did this back then. Well, you didn't really do it because you couldn't. Right. These guys did not look at 54, 55, 57 like anybody else. Terry Funk's one name, but Terry Funk yeah. was later, I think. Yeah. But, you know, you got to look back and say, like, the industry changes so much. Health changes so much. A guy like yes. AJ Styles would be considered a dinosaur 20 years ago. Right. Uh, Hogan, we were having arguments that Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair were too old. Hogan was when they were like in 39, their late 30s, yeah. 38. I mean, we had the same conversation about Cena. Remember that yeah, when yeah. Cena was 34. Okay, so we're going back 10 years, 10 years, yeah, let's yeah. say. No, uh, eight years. The conversation was, man, you only got a couple more years with John Cena because by 40, he, he's different he's times, man. Different, different times. times. Everything has changed. Yeah. These guys are on such unbelievable regiments. Look at Minoru Suzuki. Minoru Suzuki. He's 142 <laughs> years old. The guy looks nothing older than 45. 
Really nuts when you think about it, too. Especially, I think, if you take away the ageism that WWE is very fond of, you know, like, you could have had a Macho Man wrestle for the, for another 10 years. Well, think, right? you know what? I would love to do, I would love to do fantasy booking. We should bring back this fantasy booking yes, segment. Yes, yes, yes. I would love to do if Macho never leaves. Oh, yeah. Right? Because his last match was with Crush. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, see you later. But I believe him and him and him and uh, Sean did a house show. But oh, he was supposed to be in a feud so with good. Shawn Michaels. Yeah. That, what would that have done? That's my favorite. One of my favorite wrestling. What if 1998 you know? Macho Man Randy Savage mm-hmm. still in WWE. Great. Him and Austin. You know, like I yeah, love imagine that. I, I would love to do. <laughs> I, actually, I was talking to Jess about this. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. I'm dead serious about this. I would like to do a collaborative book. Okay. Of all the what ifs, but uh-huh. done properly. Yes. Like done by not just like me being a, a jerk off and fantasy booking, yeah. you know, like done by like have a chapter. Uh, Dave Meltzer books it. Yeah. Have a chapter, uh, you know, uh, Wade Keller. You know, you have Great. these top guys that, that have been watching this and viewing this, or have wrestlers in there too. Uh, That's a great idea. I, I, I would, I would love to do a compilation of that because you could kind of see like people's thought process and mm-hmm. what the better outcome would have been. Because now you're playing, you know, a Monday morning quarterback. Yeah, and it's always kind of better when you do that. That's a lot of fun. I, I love thinking about that stuff. Uh, you want to do one more question? Yeah, let's do that. All right, this one is from Estilo Latino on. Twitch. let's do this if you want a super chat we'll do we'll do the next three super chats great uh right after this question yeah. what's been the reaction from warner media who takes oh man you cannot have these questions disappear on me like this who guys. takes over as aew's yeah. warner media ambassador i think that's a big hit for them by the way okay i, I cody was very uh aligned with warner media mm-hmm. i could tell you the tv side knew on monday morning interesting so I, I asked a bunch of people there and I asked them over the weekend and nobody had heard unless they were kayfabe me, which is always possible. That know? is true. Yeah. Sometimes they tell me like, oh, I don't know. And then they get like, they feel bad. Mm-hmm. Like they get, they get very scared. Tony Khan shows up there with a stick. And he, go, he goes like this. Yeah. 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 Guys, uh, we have time for a couple more questions. If you want to super chat us, we will answer your question immediately. Yeah. Um, but I, I think... I think that that is a hit, but again, this is he is a media asset to WWE. Yes. Um, I I think this is a if, optics wise. I keep saying this, and I'm using that specifically yeah. to explain the situation here. Optics wise, I think this is a very good positive for AEW for WWE. Mm. If they're telling the story, you know, the story, the narrative is is the truth that morale is kind of shitty. Yeah. Uh, people feel unheard over there. Uh, they're not that super happy. There are people that feel like there's no hope for them over there, but that's always, you know, that's going to happen in every company, but it's very vocal because of WWE and who they are. Yeah. This kind of, I mean, if you're fighting that, that thing, uh, optics wise, this is a great get. The other thing is somebody told me this at WWE, it, it, you know, in an unofficial way, but they said, we're now going to be on the offensive. It's our season to be in on the offensive. You know what? That makes sense, right? And, and I found that con- that, and this was said to me last Thursday mm-hmm. before the Cody stuff. Fascinating. So you could see that maybe the Austin stuff was brewing. Maybe some of that, the 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 stuff that we're going to see in Saudi Arabia is brewing. You know, I listen, man. This is all fun stuff. Like I, yeah. you know, people people get worked up. People are very angry at Cody. How could you be angry at a guy that that's deciding what's best for his future? Or at anybody? Or really. anybody, man. You know, this is sometimes not everything is a win. You know, I love AEW, but they're yeah. not going to win every week. The only the only reason you can get mad at Cody is if, like, you hear a story comes out where it's like, and then he pulled a gun on Tony Khan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that'll, that'll be that'll be it. Uh, Listen, you, 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 that's not, in wrestling, that's happened multiple times, and it's not grounds for fire for many of those people. So. Know, it's, well, back in the day. You know, talk yeah. about back in the day. Yeah. Now, all right. This is, uh, we got another couple right, of Super Chats this. here. This is one from Amir El Karani. Thank you, Amir. Thanks, Amir, for $2. If Mania goes well, do we get Austin versus Goldberg? So this is, I know there's nothing official yet that this match is happening. Right. But the, what I was told was this is the closest that they've ever gotten to. And they have tried many times. This is the closest. Mm-hmm. They've never been this close to getting it done. That probably means that Austin feels fine. He feels good. You know, like when The Rock had that match with, with Cena... I don't think anybody anticipated that he was going to tear his groin muscle off the bone. You know what I mean? Like, right. there was stuff planned, and that's why we really didn't see much after that. But I, I think for Austin's case, 
57 years old. Mm -hmm. You really don't have too many more to do. Um, let's hope that this goes well mm. and it, it's it, it's great business and then we could see that because you know what you want to sell out a stadium sometime yeah you know they're going to be doing those international shows the the uk show is going to be a stadium show uh you have uh summer coming up that's a stadium show you have money in the bank coming up right you know you would if there was ever a freaking opportunity to do it and these two guys are friends exactly man you know what Forget it. Like I said, forget about work rate. Like just the optics of seeing this is a great story for WWE that they're going to they're gonna push this down your throat for the next 20 years. That big stunner on, that Austin gets that pen and that's the final WCW nail in the coffin. You get that and they could work the exact same match as Hogan Rock and it'll still be great. The most protected WrestleMania match in history. That right? was lit literally... In my opinion, that is my favorite match. It's one an of my amazing top, match, yeah. One of my top favorite matches. Forget about, again, work rate, different story. Right. It, But that is said so perfect. It was one of the most protected matches that they've ever done. Mm -hmm. It was so organic. Two guys that were totally in control of that match. And it shows that's the best of wrestling. Oh, and yeah. you don't need to do, you don't need to have a five-star match to pull it off. Uh, we got a couple of more Super Chats here. John, Joel Wood, uh, 499. Johnny Gargano. Any news on where he goes back to a back to WWE or over to AEW? I think he's uh, after the baby, the baby, the rapper, not 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 the child that is going to this again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the baby, <laughs> the baby, the brat, the brat, and the baby. All right, uh, I think AEW. Right, he's like things simmered down. He's into dadhood, and uh, he shows up at some point. I think he's going to show up on BTE first. What? Uh, no, no, no. They're gonna they're gonna debut him. Yeah, interview. I mean that would be cool too. Yeah, this is from uh, Felsley Junior seventy one. Is this the last super chat? This is the last super right. chat. Get Let's... it if you want another question. Get it in, and we're wrapping it up. Yeah. All right. So, Felsley seven Felsley Junior seventy one asks or says Cody debuts. Triple H interrupts his promo. Some very real feelings exposed, leading to a marquee match at WrestleMania. Cody debut. Well, I mean, Hunter had a heart attack at a cardiac uh, uh, event, right? Yes. Uh, I mean, that would be a great match, but they, they did say that there is one match. Mm -hmm. There is a major guy that there's a major level match. There's another person for WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. I mean, they could, they could have done a very good job at, at hiding the, you know, the recovery and all that. And you could have, I don't know. I, I don't know who that person is, but in my mind, I, I'm thinking it's the undertaker. I don't, I, I don't feel comfortable with triple H going into a match this soon. It hasn't even been a year. Yeah. You know that. By the way, that that was scary. Yeah, it's yeah. not this like it wasn't this like minor thing. It's always frightening when that happens to somebody. But wasn't also Jerry Lawler wrestling like the week after he had his heart attack? Yeah, but Jerry Lawler just drinks you know Coca Cola and he recovers from everything. Uh, do you want to do one more question, or yes. do you want to show our uh, our our beautiful? Oh, let's try. Our, let's show our beautiful video. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, we have a video package here from a lot of you guys that you send in your congratulations videos. Uh, we're going to go into this, but man, 400 episodes, 400 episodes to another 400. I don't another, another 10 years of another this 10 years. I listen, man, who knows? We're going to be doing this from the moon at some point. And, uh, our next guest is going to be Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, That's why you're wearing the shirt. That's why I'm wearing it. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. But right, guys. we'll show you this video and then, uh, and then we're, we'll, we're we'll say our thank yous. Hey, Andrew and Rich, congrats on 400 episodes of the Matt Men Podcast. It's an amazing accomplishment, and you should be very proud. Now listen, you have a podcast of a certain age now, so you start taking better care of yourself. Rich, keep doing what you're doing. You're beautiful. I love you. Andrew, just one thing. These are poisonous, okay? Stay away from these. This is your kryptonite. All right? Be good. Well, hello there, Matt Men. Congratulations on your 400th episode uh, to both Andrew Zarian, the fanciest man I know, and to Rich Stambolian. Did I say that right, Rich? We were practicing, but I don't know if I said that right. Um, either way, congratulations to the both of you for hitting 400 episodes. Go have a drink on me. That's all I've got. Congratulations. Andrew Zarian and Rich Stambolian, there's one thing cooler than Matt Riddle. It is Matt Men Podcast and 400 episodes. Congratulations, guys. Keep it up.
What's up, guys? It's Robbie from Barstool, and I'm just wishing you guys a happy 400th episode. It's an amazing accomplishment. I actually looked up what the main event of Raw 400 was, and it was Triple H and Stephanie McMahon versus Kurt Angle and Trish Stratus. Kind of like that WrestleMania 34 match, replaced Trish with Ronda. Congrats on 400 episodes. Awesome accomplishment, guys. Andrew and Rich, congratulations on 400 episodes of Matt Men Podcast. Honestly, I thought you guys would have tapped out at 50, but here we are. Here's to 400 more episodes. Here's to 400 more hangouts and 400 more Summer Slams where I can sneak in on your ticket at the last minute. Love you guys. Looking forward to seeing you again soon. Take care. Oh, hello. This is Top Cult's Kyle Davis wishing Andrew Zarian and Rich... Damn, dude. Do I not know your last name? Ah, Stramboli. Wishing Andrew Zarian and Rich Stramboli a congratulations on making it to 400 episodes of Mat Men. Congratulations, guys. You've earned it. You deserve it. We'll, we'll celebrate tonight. We'll see you both in bed. Hello, it's me, I as Akhtar. I may not be the unofficial third Mat Men, but I'm definitely in the top... 250. I just wanted to say congratulations on 400 episodes. Your positive tone while discussing the sometimes infuriating world of professional wrestling is much appreciated. Keep up the great work, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the real world real soon. Good afternoon, guys. Um, Let me start off by saying what a huge honor it is uh, to have been asked to make this video. Um, and comment on your 400th episode. Um, If I'm being honest, I didn't realize you guys were still making new episodes. So just finding that out was like uh, a mind blower for me. Um, So my favorite moment in your show's history had to be um, when Pete Campbell first figured out that Don Draper was actually Dick Whitman. Um, Sorry. Who? Rich and Andrew Zakarian? Like, like the Iron Chef? Hey. A wrestling podcast. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't want to be a part of this. Hey, fellas, wanted to congratulate you on your 400th show. Uh, who would have thought that someone who has so few buttons could get so far in podcasting like seriously the episode to button ratio was always going to be uh, an easy battle to win but what you have done is unmatched in wrestling podcasting but seriously it's been been great to get to know you fellas and uh, a big congrats on the milestone what's going on guys john alba here and i just want to say congratulations on 400 episodes of the Madman. I'm so proud of you guys for making it this far. It's such a great commitment that you have to your fans to get to 400 episodes, and I really genuinely am so proud, so congratulations. I swear, if I get called Andrew Zarian again at a wrestling show, I'm going to absolutely lose my... Habibis, what is up? Happy 400th episode. Without the two of you, I would not be where I am at today. So thank you so much for taking me on the journey with you guys. You guys do amazing work. The two of you, Andrew, Rich, you guys are like mentors to me. More than that, you guys are like brothers to me. And to celebrate, I have my 400 favorite dream matches that I would like to see with Enzo and I would like to read those off for you guys. So first, Enzo Bret Hart ladder match. Enzo Stacy Keebler Braun panties match. Enzo Triple H steam room brawl. Enzo The Rock WrestleMania 39. Enzo versus Roman Reigns for the title. Hey everyone, Alana from Girl Presses Play and I wanted to take a second to congratulate Rich and Andrew over at Mad Men for their 400th episode. 
of their podcast. That's amazing. Congrats, guys. Celebrate as much as humanly possible. I just wanted to send a big congratulations to my friends Andrew Zarian and Rich Stambolian uh, over at the Matt Men Wrestling Podcast because you guys have done 400 episodes now. That is incredible. 400 episodes. 400 times you guys have gone on the air and tried to make sense out of some horseshit storyline in the world of professional wrestling. And God bless you for continuing week after week to make sense out of this ludicrous uh, art form that we call professional wrestling. And, uh, and also, a 400, I mean, that's a lot. That's got to be a record. I think you guys have the all-time record for most uh, podcasts by Armenians. That would be, like, that's a record you have, you know? No matter what other, uh, well, actually, my podcast, the uh, Man School 202, we've done 500 episodes. So I think I have the record. So you guys are second place. That's okay. Second place. You guys have the IC title of, uh, of, of you know, Armenian podcasting. That's, that's not bad. That's not bad, right? Here's the 400 more. Congratulations, Mr. Rick Stambolin and Mr. Andrew Zarian. 400 episodes. I was probably on like three or four of them. But uh, yeah, unbelievable. My number one source for wrestling news, the Matt Men Podcast. Congratulations, and I'll leave you with this. <clears throat> this is my uh, Vince uh, comment room voice. Uh, Steph, those are uh, great numbers. Uh, Nick, uh, if you like to talk now. Uh, there you go. Have a great show. That was a lot of fun. That was fun. Fantastic job, guys. Yeah. Uh, you know, first of all, Horny Harry loved it. Uh, <laughs> Horny Harold in the building. Horny Harold in the building. I absolutely <laughs> love that. Uh, dude, listen, man. This is uh, this has uh, been a fun ride. 400 episodes. Uh, I think the last year, a lot has changed for the show. Yeah. But I think we're still the same jackasses that we always were with this show. Absolutely. Nothing has changed. Yeah. Uh, somebody messaged me and they're like, it's amazing how you did that show just now. Uh, he's like, you did that show uh on sunday and it's like mm. so serious and then you do this and you just talk about dick jokes i'm like yeah man that's the whole i that's think the whole concept here that's the happy compromise right I can, we can break news and have fun with it i mean this is this is what it is it's wrestling it's not uh politics mm. no mgg uh, no mg geek uh, thank you video ah f- man, you guys <laughs> you. you know i was waiting for that <laughs> you think it would it would, it would have been three minutes of him cursing us out yeah that's what it would have been. Uh, guys, thank you all for tuning in for 400 episodes. Thank you, Great Andrew. production, too, by, by the way. Uh, hey, you, know, you know what, Rich? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I got I to also shout out, you know, the uh, one of the original Matt Man Jonathan also. Like, yeah. He here, here for the initial run. Um, left in 2014. But, you know, here we are 400 episodes later. Uh, much love, man. Thank you, MG. Thank you, Suncast. Okay. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, those thank dudes, by the way. Everybody, right? Who those dudes. John, Jonathan, and uh, and Matt. Are really, mm-hmm. really. I mean, they they've upped the production. Everything that you know we've done here has been a huge, huge. Uh, they've been a huge part of it. John Suncast has been a huge part of since the beginning of JFK, two thousand and nine. I know he's been here, and you know what? He was a viewer. He and, was a fan of the show, and uh, he sent over like clips. He would like chop up the clips. I'm like, this guy is brilliant. I got to keep him around forever. And now he just lives in the basement. I think uh, I think that's how you get everybody who's a producer on the show. Like, everybody, they, they're fans first, yeah, and then you put them to work. You're like, yeah. oh, you want to be a fan of mine? That's what Dave did with me. Put, get to work. Yeah. Oh that's yeah. What Dave said. And now you're replacing Dave. Who's going to replace you? Is it going to be Suncast? It's going to be Suncast. Is it going to yeah. be Jonathan? Is it's it going to be, be MG? It's just rotating, total <laughs> rotating. Oh boy. All right. All right, guys. That's it for this week. See you all later. Goodbye. Later. <laughs>